What is up, creator? It is awfully good to see you. Um, I've been reading the tea leaves and I'm getting some feedback on the OBS lyrics tutorial that I built for you. Seems like there's some confusion and a general consensus that maybe this plugin isn't super duper great because it's complex and uh, a little bit difficult to use in regards to managing the lyrics and so forth. So I want to let you know that I did make another video that discusses how to employ a Google online application to cycle lyrics. You can check that out right here. That's a fairly simplistic way to approach it. Another way is to use the Move Transition plugin, and that's what we're going to dig into right now. I'm going to show you a proof of concept by showing you lyrics going underneath of a movie to the Star Spangled Banner. So I'm going to show you that right now. Here we go. So to respect your time and to quote a very famous major pain, we're going to get this done quick, fast, and in a hurry. Let's get some. <laughs> Electrify your online presence with live streaming. If you're new to the channel and you're a live streamer, I welcome you. You can think of me as an educator slash researcher who is constantly looking for all the wicked cool fun plugins, tools, and scripts that makes OBS Studio amazing. So if you're looking to get exposure to all new kinds of functionality, this is the place. So let's first go and download the plugin that powers this thing. It is called Move Transition and it is by far my, my absolute, absolute favorite, favorite plugin. plugin. Move Transition by Exeldro. Click the white button in the upper right hand corner and you'll be presented with a download pop-up screen and you just want to choose the download button next to the operator system that you own install it boom you're done it's really easy he made it simple okay after installing the plugin make sure that you shut down OBS and restart it so that OBS can re-grab the new files that were put into the OBS studio program folder okay now let me just show you a quick review of what I did in order to create that demonstration I have a scene called lyrics and inside that scene I have three sources one source is the anthem it's a WAV file the next one is a movie of the American flag which is what you can see here and I have that American flag movie moved up just a little bit so that underneath you can see the color of the stage of the OBS stage which is black and on top of that I have a text source with all the lyrics on it so what I did was if, if I double click the text source you can see here that the lines are separated by two returns it's purely up to you you could have two lines or three lines for example if I showed you what I pasted from here is the text file uh, so every line is separated by two returns or you could do it by two lines so whatever you want to see in that space is purely up to you the bottom line is you have to create some space between the lines of text so that when you click the hotkey, it moves out of you and shows you the next lines. Cut and dry, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to show you how I created the move transition filters to move that text source up every time you hit a hotkey. Let's get into it. You would think that maybe you would add the filter to one of the sources, but in reality, what you need to do is add the filter to the actual scene, and a lot of people get confused with that. So right-click the scene that you've created, and click the filters. Okay, we're gonna start from square one. So I'll click the plus sign in the filter box here, go to move source, and we're gonna name it no text. Okay, Am I, is that a P or a no? Let's make sure, I can't see too good. Text, there we go, hit okay. Okay, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to select and make sure that the text GDI is selected as that source that we're gonna manipulate, okay? And that's gonna be true for every one of these filters that we make. Another thing that's gonna be the same for every one of these filters is to set the custom duration to 1000. Anything below 1000 makes the movement look really funky, too fast. Another thing that we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we select on every one of these filters is to select the next move on to hotkey. Okay, so those three parameters are the same for every single filter that we're going to create to do this. So I just wanted to make sure you're clear on that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that the text 
source, oh, here, here it is here, shows nothing. So I'm going to move it out of view and go up here and click Get Transform. Now I want to make sure you're aware of something that's a little bit funky. If you click this button and it moves out of view, it means usually that the coordinates were not registered. So there will be another example where it does it. In this case, it didn't do it this time. So it's kind of a glitch and sometimes it doesn't and sometimes it does do it. But in this case, it didn't. So we're in good shape. So there's our first move transition and that is to show no text. So we're going to do it again. This time we'll hit the plus sign, select move source, and I'm going to put dash one to represent the first move. Hit OK. Text GDI is selected. We're looking good. We're going to change the milliseconds to 1000. We will make sure that the next move on is set to hotkey. And the next move will be selected later. We're going to create all our move filters first, and then we're going to come back and make changes to this. So what we need to do now is scroll, get back into the main view here, and scroll up the first line of text that we want to see. And then we want to scroll up and hit Get Transform. Boom. And as you can see, the coordinates did change that time, so we're good to go. Now we hit the plus sign again, and we select Move Source again. And this time we put dash two, right? Hit OK. Make sure that the source is text. Make sure that the duration is 1000. Scroll to the bottom and make sure that it says hotkey. Then we move the line up one more time and show the second line, OK? And we hit get transform. And the coordinates did change and we're good. And we keep on doing this. So I'm going to build five of these right now just so that you understand the concept. We'll speed it up real fast so that you don't have to wait. Here we go. Okay, now that all the move sources have been added, all the coordinates have been added to each one of the filters, the last thing that we have to do is tell the system what to do after you hit the hotkey for each filter. So for example, when I'm in the no text filter and I hit the hotkey, I want the system to understand that I want it to go to the next filter. So that's what next move means. So if I'm in no text for the next move, I want it to go to move source one. There you go. If I'm in move source one, I scroll down to the bottom and the next time I hit the hotkey, I want it to go to next move two and so on and so forth. Two goes to three, three goes to four. I'm in two, I go to three. I'm in three, I go to four. I'm in four, I go to five. And when I go into five, I want to go back to no text. All right. Boom. Now, the last thing that we have to do is pretty super duper easy. All we have to do is go into settings, hotkeys, scroll down to the scene that contains all our move filters. And here they are right here. And just hit the same hotkey combination for each one. Hit apply, hit OK. And now when I'm in the, so in the scene and I hit my hotkey, we get a scrolling text based on hotkey and it works great. It's a little bit arduous, but when you get the general concept down, it's super easy. And a benefit of this is that each scene can be lyrics for individual songs, unlike the other plugin where you have to move stuff around with a new song and the interface is a little bit funky and chunky. This is more easy because every scene could be a song with its own individual lyric text that you set up. So it'll make it a little bit easier to understand going from one song to the next in your scenes, right? It makes it a lot easier. Now, if you'd like to see another way of controlling hotkeys and making motion, I made another video where sunglasses come in and as you hit the hotkey, one pair of sunglasses comes in and then another one comes in to replace it. So two actions are happening every time you hit the hotkey along with two other things that we do, which is really cool and really powerful and move transitions is next level and Exeldro is unbeatable in regards to quality with OBS plugins. Check out the video right here. You will absolutely love it. I guarantee it. If you like this one, you're going to love this one too. Best wishes to you. Stay strong. Keep fighting. I love you. Take it easy. Mm. Welcome to Costco. I love you.